Chapter 1. Most people accept only what they can see or what they are told, shunning different ideas. The black swan logic is said to have originated many years ago. Before the discovery of Australia, people in the old world had been told, had seen, and so they were convinced that there were only white swans in existence. All swans were white. But then the very first black swan was sighted. Of course, it was a complete surprise for the ornithologists then who stood steadfast in their anecdotal, even somewhat empirical belief of only white swans. The black swan logic makes it evident that not knowing about a certain thing does not imply that it is non-existent. Just a single observation made immensely invalidated the general sightings of millions of white swans. This illustrates the severe limitation to our learning from mere experience and observations and the fragility of our knowledge. The human mind suffers from three main ailments when it comes in contact with history. With information from past events, Nassim Nicholas Taleb called them the triplet of opacity. Number one, the illusion of understanding. This expatiates on how short-sighted we humans can be. Everyone thinks they understand what is going on in this world which is more complicated and random than we could ever imagine. Number two, the retrospective distortion. Taleb explained this as how we can assess matters only after the fact. History seems more organized and clearer in history books than in reality. Number three, the overvaluation of factual information and the handicap of authoritative and learned people. This is particularly when categories are created, when they platonify. Black Swan logic expresses that one does not know to be far more relevant than what one does know. Chapter 2. Black Swans are often represented by the most unexpected things. Nassim Taleb developed two ideas to help explain his Black Swan theory. He called these ideas Mediocristin and Extremistin. Mediocristin is where the normal things happen, the things that are expected. It consists of the easy to predict, expected, small impact, and mundane. Extremistin deals with what was not expected, the one that leaves the biggest impact. The extremistin inequalities are such that a single observation can disproportionately impact the aggregate, or the total. Talib believes that the most important events fall into the extremistin category, and most times, these events happen way more than people realize. In extremistin, one unit can easily affect the total in a disproportionate way. Extremistin can produce black swans. In this world, one should always be careful of the knowledge they derive from data. Data in mediocristin augments very rapidly with the supply of information. But then knowledge in extremistin increases slowly and erratically with the addition of data, some of it being extreme, possibly at an unknown rate. A different way of pointing out the difference between these two ideas brought about by Taleb is the fact that mediocristin involves the tyranny of the collective, the obvious, the predicted, and the routine. Extremistin, however, is where we are subjected to the tyranny of the singular, the accidental, the unseen, and the predicted. Extremistin does not always imply direct black swans. Some phenomena might be consequential and rare, and yet, in a way, predictable, mostly to the ones who are ready and prepared for them and have the tools to understand them. These extremistins fall under the category of near black swans. They are somehow complacent scientifically. And so, knowing about their occurrence should lower one's surprise. These events are rare but expected. Talib chooses to call these extremistins gray swans. Chapter 3. Prediction is a great cause of the ignorance towards black swans. The world is far more complicated than any of us think, and normally that should not be a problem, except most people do not really believe that. Nassim Talib wondered why we do this, why we predict so much. Talib also pointed out that most people tend to tunnel when looking into the future, making it business as usual, black swan free, when in fact there is nothing usual about the future. It is not a platonic category. We get too comfortable predicting the future because we continue to focus on the current occurrences as a yardstick to measure what is to be expected, always forecasting in the box. We find it easier and better to narrate backwards, to invent stories that convince us that we understand the world and understand the past. Human beings are most times highly arrogant about what they think they know. We know a lot, this is true, but there is this built-in tendency that we know much more than we actually do, or we know it all. This is where predictions come in. Prediction is now strongly institutionalized in our world. Most of us are suckers for those who claim to help us navigate and comprehend uncertainty. 
The prediction power, most times, is what gets a lot of people into trouble. It is, in the calmest, descriptive way possible, scandalous that, despite the scientific research, study, and empirical records, most people continue to project into the future and make baseline predictions. They falsely stand on the thought that they are good at what they are doing, predicting and using the tools, methods, and processes that exclude rare events. We often fail to realize that our so-called predictions prevent us from catching big events. Believing and thinking that we have everything under control and that we know all there is to know causes us to miss black swans. The more frightening part about this is that this process, if not improved, could carry on for years, leaving the human population in smug ignorance and unpreparedness. There are constantly occurring conditions under which many people overestimate the unusual. And this is how all insurance companies grow and thrive. Even if it was that the world is set in mediocristin, in which large, unusual events would barely ever occur, we would still underestimate the extremes. As a matter of fact, our ignorance would become worse and we'll begin to predict that these events never happen. This is a strong particularity of our intuitive judgment. Talib described our situations as sub mediocristin but then we do not live in a mediocristin world. The events we face are basically extremistin. They are run by concentration, not predictions, and are subjected to black swans. Chapter 4. Cultivate the habit of being prepared at all times for the impact of highly improbable events. Once we are able to shed the idea of living under the protection and safety of false predictability, losing all comfort that we can depict the exact state of our lives in the world, then what next? Losing the idea of full predictability may seem brazen and possibly scary, but the truth is there are still a lot of things one could achieve and do as long as you remain conscious and aware of their limits. Having the knowledge of the fact that it is not possible to predict does not mean one cannot benefit from unpredictability. The answer to being able to thrive in unpredictability is to be prepared. We should be aware of the fact we cannot predict, but we should be prepared for all possible and relevant eventualities. One of the ways we can achieve this is to maximize the serendipity around us. Talib expressed this with a short story. Apelles, the painter, who, while doing a portrait of a horse, was attempting to depict the foam from the horse's mouth. After trying very hard and making a mess, he gave up and, in irritation, took the sponge he used for cleaning his brush and threw it at the picture. Where the sponge hit, it left a perfect representation of the foam. This story expresses trial and error. Trial and error simply conveys trying a lot. We all have intellectual, emotional, and psychological strains with trial and error, and that is expected. It is difficult for us humans to accept that the series of small failures are necessary in life. But it is what it is. Most people are afraid of losses and failures, so they choose to engage in strategies and events that lead to very little volatility and unpredictability ignoring the fact that most of these events contain the risk of a very large loss. People hate unpredictability and then choose the path they view as safer. They involve themselves in what at the end of the day would blow up. And most times, these big losses end up being the cause of many widespread suicides. Just because something has an unpredictable end and seems difficult does not mean something good can come out of it. Chapter 5 Another way to come to terms with the randomness of black swans is to accept the aesthetics of its unpredictability. The great Galileo, a debunker of falsehoods, as agreed by Taleb, once wrote, The great book of nature lies ever open before our eyes, and the true philosophy is written in it. But we cannot read it unless we have first learned the language and the characters in which it is written. It is written in mathematical language, and the characters are triangles, circles, and other geometric figures. Triangles, circles, squares, and all other geometric concepts that made a lot of people yawn in the classroom may be beautiful and pure notions, but they seem more present in the minds of people who deal with them on a daily basis. School teachers, architects, engineers, design artists, mathematicians, and all the rest. Then in nature itself, and thus should be all right, except that many of us are not aware of this. Mother Nature did not exactly go to high school. She did not read the books of Euclid and Alexandra and did not do geometry courses. Her geometry is iffy, but it is one that is easy to comprehend, with a logic of its own. Mountains are not pyramids or triangles. Trees are not circles. Straight lines are basically almost never seen anywhere. Talib began to wonder, was Galileo legally blind? Because even the great Galileo, with his presumed immense independence of mind, 
was not competent to take a clean look at Mother Nature. Talib believed strongly that if Galileo had windows in his house and ventured outside from time to time, then he should have known that triangles and circles are not easily found in nature. We can be so easily brainwashed. According to Talib's theory, we are either blind, illiterate, or both. The nature's geometry not being Euclid's was so obvious, and nobody, basically almost nobody, saw it. This physical blindness is basically identical to the lucid misconception that enables us to think casinos represent unpredictability. Chapter 6 You, as a person, can be different and do the unexpected. This makes you a black swan. Nassim Tlaib once received a piece of advice that he boldly declares life-changing. He views this advice as wise and, most importantly, empirically valid. He believes this advice from a classmate of his in Paris back then, a novelist to be, Jean Oliver Tedesco. He was trying to run after a subway and catch up to it when Tedesco prevented him from doing so by simply saying, I don't run for trains. This may seem like a very small piece of advice, but it registered. Talib now encourages us to snub our destinies. He has taught himself to desist from running to keep on schedule and indirectly guides us to do the same. Talib's given advice simply expresses that we should learn to stand out to not be afraid of a little unpredictability and understand that we cannot control what is already clearly out of our reach. Not running for trains expresses that it is okay to be a bit different, and we should learn to come to terms with the fact that sometimes our lives may move as a highly improbable event. In refusing to run to catch trains, there is true value of elegance and aesthetics in behavior, a sense of being in control of time, schedule, and life. Missing a train is only painful if you run after it. Likewise, not matching the idea of success others expect from you is only painful if that's what you are seeking. You stand above the rat race and the pecking order, not outside of it, if you do so by choice. Quitting a high-paying position, if it is your decision, will seem a better payoff than the utility of the money involved. This may seem crazy, but it works. This is the first step toward the Stoics throwing a four-letter word at fate. You have far more control over your life if you decide on your criterion by yourself. Nassim Nicholas Talib. Talib goes on to explain to us that Mother Nature has given us some defense mechanisms, and one of these is our ability to consider that the grapes we cannot or did not reach are sour. But then also, a ferocious stoic prior rejection and disdain of these alleged grapes is even more beneficial. It is seen as far more difficult to be a loser in a game you set up yourself. And so, in black swan terms, this means that you are exposed to the improbable only if you let it control you. You should always control what you do, so make this your end. Imagine a speck of dust next to a planet a billion times the size of Earth. The speck of dust represents the odds in favor of your being born. The huge planet would be the odds against it. So, stop sweating the small stuff. Don't be like the ingrate who got a castle as a present and worried about the mildew in the bathroom. Stop looking the gift horse in the mouth. Remember that you are a black swan. Nassim Nicholas Talib. Conclusion Black swans are ever existent and occurring. They are difficult to find and comprehend to the normal unprepared mind. The world is a complicated ground full of black swans, and to understand this, one has to come to terms with the beauty of unpredictability in all aspects of life. A continued dependence on the usual or normal will only limit your mind's grasp of reality. A black swan defies the normal and, as such, we often prefer to ignore it, seeing as confronting it only causes distress and conflict. However, living in blissful ignorance isn't an option. The world contains a flock of ever-occurring, hard-to-explain things. The probability of running into at least one is quite high, so you must ready your mind in the event that you do. As much as we like to control and be in control of our lives, there is so much unpredictability, things that cause us to reconsider what we previously thought to be true or logical. We must be willing to open up our minds to the possibility that we're always going to be face-to-face -face with a series of events we could not have predicted or envisioned. In readying ourselves for these unpredictable events, we are better equipped to handle whatever it is. No surprises. The black swan is a life hack a self-help kit that gives you the right tools to take on our world of wanton probabilities. Try this. There's a black swan in just about everything we encounter in our daily lives. You must endeavor to identify it and use it to your advantage.